Hello friends, welcome back to the lecture series on applied statistics and econometrics. So, today we are going to start a new topic in the course and that is basically the case of time series data analysis. And in this component of the course, we are going to study two major topics and they are namely index numbers, theory of index numbers and the theory of classical time series. Although we know we are going to cover these topics very briefly, but towards the end of the course we are again going to come back to the case of time series data analysis, but you know from the econometric context or perspective. So, now let us have a look at today's agenda items. So, now let us have look at today's agenda items. So, we will start with a very brief introduction to index numbers which are very useful when you have time series data. And then we are going to talk about the types of index numbers. Broadly speaking, they are of two types, simple and composite. And composite index numbers could be of three, four types. But here in this particular lecture, we are only going to cover two of them, simple aggregative indices and simple average of relative indices. Data can also come from different periods of time. Say you are uh, interested to study the uh, per capita income of any country and uh, you have collected a data set where you have say 30 or 50 years of data on per capita income or per capita GDP of a country. So, that kind of data set will be called a time series data set. Now, this time series data has some special features which are uh, not relevant for a cross sectional data. Of course, we are not going to uh, study all those special features right now, because I have saved some lectures towards the end of this course. So, we will again come back to time series data analysis in the econometrics module of this course. But as of now for this week, we are going to study what is known classical time series analysis and we are going to uh, cover some concepts which are useful to conduct a classical time series analysis. So, you see with time price changes, it may increase, it may decrease and if you know if it increases or decreases then we have two different terms in economics, you know they are called inflation and deflation respectively. So, the value of money or the value of the unit uh, monetary unit that is used to measure different economic variables changes and uh, that is why uh, you have to think about uh, you know a common benchmark. So, that you can compare the monetary variable values uh, for different time periods. So, that the, in the change in price factor that is the inflation or deflation is duly taken care of. And that is why to uh, start the time series analysis, the best topic is to uh, study index numbers. So, index numbers is an applied or mathematical uh, statistical tool or technique that helps us to uh, represent numbers of as of today with respect to some numbers that is for a reference period. So, what do we mean by that we will be much more clear when we will go through the uh, formal definition of index number and then we will study different forms of index number. So, formally speaking this is the way we can define an index number. So, it is a measure of changes in the values of an economic variable or a group of related variables from one situation to another. Well, as I have started the discussion uh, in a time series analysis context. So, here the situation you can say that they could be two or more different time periods and this is what I have started with. But the concept of index number is much broader than time series analysis context. So, here the situations could also be different special units and you know here I am going to give you an example say have you heard of this uh, concept called purchasing power parity. So, purchasing power parities are basically uh, 
measuring the value of the currency for one country with respect to the other country. So, in this context the situation actually is different country. So, it is not changing with respect to time, well it may change with respect to time, but when uh, we uh, look at the purchasing power parity concept in general, then you know what is changing is basically one country from the other. So, in the purchasing power parity uh, variable we compare the value of currency of one country with respect to the value of currency of another country. Now, here note that when we are using an index number the focus is on relative change rather than on the absolute amount of change and that is why these index numbers are always expressed in reference to one selected situation and that is called base period or base case and generally that is marked with 100. Now, why 100 it can be even 1000, but you know that is the norm. So, you declare your base situation as 100 and this is called the reference base. Now, how do you interpret when you observe a particular value of a, you know some index number series. So, suppose you start with the reference base and uh, the value of the index number for that reference base will be 100 always and for another year if you observe now the index number value to be 125, then that means that there is an increase of 25 percent between these two years. It implies the year for which you are observing the number 125 and the base year. So, now one question can uh, come to your mind that why should we at all study index numbers, is it just for uh, taking care of inflation? The answer is uh, not really, you know it uh, of course, you know uh, the price index numbers which are the mostly used and uh, most commonly uh, referred index numbers, they all are actually taking care of the you know uh, in the price changes in the price level or you know inflation, but uh, you know it, this measure is useful in very different contexts and let us have a look at you know a list where this index number can be applied. So, the best known index number is the consumer price index and what does it do? So, it measures the changes in retail prices paid by the consumers. Now, you may ask uh, why you know I should bother about you know this CPI? Well, the CPI actually encompasses more than 100 or 200 items in one single formula. Suppose you are interested to uh, calculate the index numbers for all the commodities that you are uh, purchasing from market and you know you can be interested for you know an index number for wheat, an index number for oil, an index number for clothes and what not. But these are all the consumer items that you are consuming. But what if you want to come up with an aggregate measure of the price level change in the economy, so that aggregate formula shall encompass all the consumption items that you have purchased in the time frame. So, the consumer price index number is an aggregate formula which will actually help you to aggregate these price changes for various commodities. And note that here the uh, quantities can have different units also. So, it can be price per kilogram, it can be price per liter, it can be price for year, but although you know they are related with various uh, you know uh, units of measurement, but this formula will aggregate all different price indexes into one single formula. And that is why it is very useful in economic analysis. So, the consumer price index number is an index number which is referred by the government and all other uh, stakeholders of uh, national economy, so that they can keep track of overall inflation in the country. Now, in many situations a person may wish to combine several items and develop an index to compare the cost of this aggregation of items in two different time periods. So, you know there could be an example of food. So, if you are interested to measure the consumption expenses over two periods of time, then you know you can uh, 
may be interested in different categories of consumption expenses and here let us assume that we are interested in food. So, for food then there could be many types of food. So, there could be like cereals, there could be beverages. Suppose you are interested in cereals. So, then you know you will collect price data on paddy, wheat, etcetera and then you are going to uh, you know express them in a compact aggregate formula. So, again index number will help you to you know uh, conduct that kind of analysis. Now, the third point. So, the index number can also convert the data such that it makes it easier to assess the trend in a series composed of exceptionally large numbers. Suppose, we are uh, talking about uh, GDP of Indian economy. So, the volume of GDP in Indian economy in 2020 compared to 1950, there is a huge jump in the GDP figure of our country right? and these are a, you know exceptionally large numbers. So, suppose you want to actually uh, measure you know a trend in the data and the best way to do that you know you make use of index number. So, that the uh, large number the GDP numbers can be scaled down to a small number and then if you plot then you know the uh, trend will be much more visible. Then the last but not the least point in this slide index number calculations actually help to protect consumers welfare in social security schemes. So, what do I mean by that? So, uh, you may be aware of the pension schemes for the senior citizens sometimes government also uh, gives some uh, money you know as charity to the poor section of our community. So, these are all monetary payments right. So, now as inflation is taking place government wants to protect the welfare of the receivers of these benefits from the government. Because as I was telling a couple of minutes back that 500 rupees uh, in 2018 and 500 rupees in 2021 they are not of same value because inflation already has taken place. So, if the government wants to keep the uh, beneficiary at the same welfare level as you know of 2018 in this year 2021, then you know they can make use of the index number and adjust the monetary payment. So, that the consumer remains at the same utility level. So, we are going to discuss this issue in the next lecture. So, I have already referred to this concept called base period or reference point. And note that reference point or base selection is a very uh, critical part of index number analysis. So, it is the period with reference to which the changes in variables of other periods are compared and expressed as percentages. So, if you change the base then of course, these percentages or ratios are gonna change. So, where and how you can fix this base period because you know the choice of base is very crucial. So, statisticians have provided some guidelines to choose a base period and generally they say that the base period should be a normal period without extreme ups and downs. So, if you know I talk about an example I think you know the year 2020 should not be uh, taken as a base period because that year was terribly hit by this covid pandemic and that was an abnormal year. And the second point that is put forward by the statisticians is the following. So, they suggest that the desirable base period should be some past period, but not too far from the present period. So, if you are interested to have uh, index number for say 2021, if you want to you know make use of index number for 2021 uh, value, then you know you should not use a series for which the base period is say 1990. Why is the case? Because the reference point if it is too far then basically by that time there is a huge change in the consumer psyche or the consumers basket that you know he or she is consuming and that is why you know that is uh, going to be reflected in the base year value also. Okay. So, now we are going to uh, start our discussion on simple index numbers. 
So, simple index numbers are computed from a single variable. So, here I am showing you a formula. So, suppose I denote my index number by capital I and uh, there is one variable V for which I am uh, collecting values for different time periods. So, here you know uh, let me tell you again as you know we are discussing index number in the context of time series data. I am not you know talking about special comparison. So, for all comparisons that you know I am referring to in today's lecture and the next lecture, I am comparing values across time periods. Okay. So, please remember this. So, the V t is the value of a variable in current time period and V naught is the value of the variable in the base period. So, base period is denoted by t equal to 0. Now, I told you that the index number value for the base period will always be 100. So, if we now say that V t which is equal to say 18 you know some arbitrary number and V naught is basically 13.5, then the index number value is 133. So, that means that the value of the variable in the current period is 133 percent of the value in the base period. So, now let us you know show you an example through some numbers. So, here uh, I am showing you the average exchange rate of a currency to US dollars for 5 years and uh, you know these are all you know fictional numbers. So, these numbers are converted into index numbers. Let me make 2000 as the base year. So, you see the table in the southeast corner of the slide here I am showing you the values for 5 years from 2000 to 2004. So, exchange rates are given in column number 2 and uh, you know now I want to convert these numbers into index numbers. So, index number is taking value 100 for the base year 2000 and then you know by applying the formula that you know I have shown you uh, above you know I have calculated the values for different cells under uh, the index number column. So, for an example if I concentrate on the last year 2004 then the index number value is 136. So, how did I get it? So, basically I divide 1089.3 the index number the exchange rate value uh, by the exchange rate value of the base year that is 800.7 and then I multiply the ratio by 100 and that is the way I get this 136.0 as the index number value. Now, in the next slide we are going to talk about the composite index numbers. So, the composite index numbers are computed from a group of variables and there are three main types of composite index numbers namely simple aggregative indices simple average of relative indices and uh, the last one is weighted aggregative indices. Now, the aggregative weighted aggregative indices can be broken down in many other types of index numbers, but you know I am saving this for the next class. So, I am going to talk about the composite index numbers through the example of a value index. So, what is a value index? So, here we are going to deal with value as the variable. So, what is value of you know uh, some commodity or some item? So, value is basically a, a product of the price of a commodity and the quantity of the commodity that you have purchased or consumed or produced if you are a farm. So, you see here within one variable there are actually two variables embedded. So, you know these uh, separate variables say P and Q, P stands for price and Q stands for the quantity of the commodity that you know we are concerned with. So, for these entities P and Q separately there could be uh, movements over time. So, the, you know we can have actually index numbers for these two uh, sub items or the components of the variable value. So, in this context actually the uh, complex or composite index numbers or weighted index numbers come into picture. So, here I am going to show you how to measure changes in the value. So, suppose I want to construct you know an index number and my base as usual is uh, you know period 0 and I am interested in the value of the index number or you know uh, the value in period uh, t. 
So, here is the formula. So, you see I have actually used you know a ratio of two different sums and you see that here the q t i represents quantity of the i th product in the t th time period, p t i represents the price of the i th product in the t th period. So, that is basically the uh, components that you find in the numerator. So, you multiply these two variables and then you add for all you know, commodities that you know you are talking about. And now, let us focus on the denominator. So, what do we see there? So, we see uh, two items q 0 i and p 0 i, what are they? So, q 0 i represents quantity of the i th product in base period and p 0 i represents the price of the i th product in the base period. So, here you know you see we are comparing n number of commodities over two time periods and we are not only comparing the physical quantities of the prices of these n commodities, actually we are comparing the value of consumption or value of production of these n commodities for two different time periods through this complicated formula. So, that is why you know I am writing here as that this formula is simply the ratio between the total monetary value in the current period which is the tth time period and that in the base period which is 0th period. So, now let us continue the discussion on composite index numbers. So, from that formula a question emerges how to separate out the changes in value between changes in price and changes in quantity. So, if you see that there is some percentage change in the value of consumption or value of production, is this entirely contributed by change in prices or is it completely coming from the changes in the volume of production or consumption. So, Basically, as I was telling that as V is a product of two variables P and Q, so if we find change in V, then that change can come from either P or Q or both. So, you know if they are coming from both sources, then how do we in disentangle these uh, different uh, changes. So, you know the same question can be rephrased and you know we can say that how a value ratio pertaining to two time periods can be decomposed into you know a component that measures the overall changes in prices between two periods and that is our price index and the another component could be that measures overall change in the quantities between two periods and that is the quantity index. So, now we are going to formally define the concept of price index and the concept of quantity index. So, we had already seen the value index in the previous slide. So, let us now have definition in simple layman's language. So, a price index represents the average of the proportionate changes or you know you can also say that these are percentage changes in the prices of the specific set of goods and services between two periods of time. And similarly, we can define quantity index which shows the average of the proportionate or percentage changes in quantities of the specified set of goods and services between two periods of time. So, now we are going to talk about the different types of composite indices and in this lecture we are going to cover only two types of indices. So, we will begin with simple aggregative price index and here the formula is given here and you see that uh, that is given by P equals to a ratio of uh, two sums and in the numerator we have sum of P i t. So, here P i t is the price of item i in the current period and uh, then you know in the denominator we have sum of P i naught. So, P i naught is the price of item i in the base period. Okay. And uh, you can uh, actually translate the same formula for the quantity also. So, here you just replace uh, you know P's by Q's in the formula that you know I have shown above and you get the simple aggregative quantity index and uh, needless to say that uh, the Q i t and uh, Q i naught abbreviations or notations can be defined in the same way. 
Now, we are going to talk about briefly about simple average of relative indices. So, these indices are the arithmetic mean of relative measures. Okay. So, what do we mean by relative measures? So, when two prices are uh, you know compared with respect to each other. So, suppose you know you have you know price of a commodity for some time period t and uh, you you know actually divide that number by price of the same commodity in the base period then you get a relative measure right. So, the simple average of relative price index uh, can be obtained by uh, following two steps. So, in step 1 to obtain the price relative by dividing the price of each item in the current period. So, that is basically P i t by its base period price. So, that is given by P i naught and then obtain the result as a percentage or ratio and then obtain the sum of this above relative measures. So, in the second stage now you obtain the sum of the above relative measure and finally, find the arithmetic mean by dividing the sum by the number of commodities that you are dealing with. Now, we move on to the concept of simple average of relative quantity index. Similarly, we can uh, construct the index for quantity or volume of a commodity and uh, again uh, we have to follow two steps. So, first you obtain the quantity relative by dividing the quantity of each item in current period that is q i t by its base period quantity which is q i naught and then obtain the ratio multiply that ratio with 100. So, you will get the percentage and then you know you obtain the sum of the above relative measures for all the commodities and finally, you divide the sum by the number of commodities that you are handling to get the arithmetic mean and that formula is shown here as capital Q. Okay, so, let us now look at an extension of the previously learned index number formula and an illustration to end today's lecture. So, in this slide I am going to talk about the case of weighted average of relative price index and the abbreviation is W A R P I. Now, why do we need W A R P I? So, you think about you know a case or a research problem where you know a researcher is interested to uh, find out what was the uh, you know rate of uh, price change or inflation rate for food items. Now, as I told you that in the food items uh, basket there could be several items like cereals like you know rice, wheat, there could be milk, butter and bread, there could be sugar, tea, coffee. So, there are several items in the food basket. Now, it is obvious that a consumer is not going to consume all these food items uh, equally. So, generally we can expect that in the food consumption basket the proportion of the cereals are going to be on the higher side. Uh, if not in terms of the value, but definitely in terms of the uh, importance to the consumer. right? So, in this discussion it is evident that if we just simply take an arithmetic mean or simple average of the price relatives to compute uh, the change in price levels, then that may not be a good idea because the relative importance of different goods in our consumption basket is not same. So, that is why W A R P I is proposed. So, a weighted price index number measures the change in the prices of a group of items where we take the relative importance of those commodities into account. So, while computing W A R P I we consider fixed weights in average of relatives index calculation. Okay. So, these weights can be denoted by omega or w and these are basically the base period dollar value spent on each item. Okay, if the uh, money currency is not dollar it can be even rupee. So, basically in some currency units uh, these uh, weights are calculated. So, here uh, 
I am showing you the formula for WARPI. So, here you see we are uh, calculating the price relatives first. So, these are uh, given by PIT divided by PI naught times 100. So, these are basically my price relatives. Now, I am multiplying each price relative for uh, you know different commodities with respective weights and they are basically given by W i naught and then I sum over all the items in my consumption basket and finally, I divide this sum by the sum of the weights. So, this concept is going to be clear if we look at an illustration. So, here in this uh, table, I am going to show you a very simple uh, case where I have some item, it can be food, it can be any other uh, you know uh, major item. Uh, and then you know there are sub items like A, B, C, D, F. So, there are six sub items in that uh, main item for which we are interested to know the price change. And we are talking about two different time periods, one is base period that is denoted by 0 and the current period which is denoted by period 1. And for these two periods, I have data on the pri unit price of these sub items, six sub items A, B, C, D, E, F and then I also know the quantity purchased and consumed for these six uh, sub items for both the periods. So, what I have to do? I have to first calculate the price relatives. So, to calculate price relative, you divide price of period 1 of a commodity by its price in the base period and then multiply that ratio uh, with 100 and this is the way uh, for sub item A, I get the price relative value 115.58 and similarly, I can calculate price relatives for the other sub items also. And then I need to calculate the weights. So, here if you remember the weights are basically the value of consumption in the base period. So, here we have to uh, multiply uh, price of the base period and the quantity purchased or consumed you know at the base period for each sub item. So, if I do it for say sub item A, then I get a weight of 30.8. Similarly, I can calculate the weights for all other 5 sub items and uh, that is the way I get my weights and you know uh, that is given under the weight column of the table. So, I need to you know take a sum. So, I have uh, got the total of 226.76. Now, I have to also multiply the price relative and the weight and that is being done you know under the last column of the table and here also I have to take the sum and uh, the sum is you know a large number 24,939.45. Okay, so, now we are done with our calculations in the table. Now, you know let us look at how we can compute different price index numbers from this table. So, first we will uh, show you the calculation for the simple average of relative price index or SARPI. So, that is basically simple from the previous slides formula you can remember that this is basically the arithmetic mean of the price relatives. So, you uh, actually take 226.76, you divide that by uh, you know the total number of items uh, in the table. So, that is 6 and you get uh, 108. So, to calculate WARPI, I have to now uh, you know take the total of the product relative times weight and then divide this by the sum of weights and uh, we get this number 109.98. Note that you know uh, they are different, they are bound to be different because one is taking care of the relative importance of the items in the consumption basket and the other one is not. So, let us stop here for the moment. So, in the next lecture, we are going to continue with the discussion on index numbers and there I am going to talk about uh, more popular index numbers which are uh, called last pair and Pache index numbers and we are also going to talk about some more applications of index numbers. Thank you.